Dear students, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is my great honor and privilege to introduce Professor Christopher Pisaridis. Sir Christopher Antonio Pisaridis is a Greek Cypriot, born in 1948 Nicasia, in Nicasia. Professor Pisaridis was awarded the 2010 Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences, jointly with Dale Martinson of Northwestern University and Peter Diamond of Massachusetts Institute of Technology for his work in labor markets with frictions. He is also the first European economist to win the Institute for Study of Labor Prize in Labor Economics, joining with his collaborator Dale Martinson in 2005. Let's warmly welcome Professor Prisaridis to the stage. chosen to talk about today is the second big interest of mine in um, economics, the, um, what's known as the structural transformation that economists go through during economic development. So let me then uh, begin with uh, just a very brief introduction, one slide only on the, on the recent history, and it is that, I mean, as we know, China has been going through very fast rates of economic growth. Other countries, of course, have experienced those rates of economic growth, but not for the length of time that China has been experiencing. You know, what's been causing these very fast rates of economic growth is obviously from the open up, opening up of the economy in the 1980s. But if you look behind, behind that, in the, the sort of structure of the labor market and what's been causing in the labor market, then what's been bringing this economic growth is the movement of labor from unproductive agriculture. So let's now talk about the implications of that, that most new job creation from now on will be in services, both high skill services like financial services, business services, but, but also the low skill. And in fact, where you're likely to see the big numbers in the low skill services, services like retailing, healthcare, education, catering, domestic service, those are the sectors that dominate job creation in Western countries that are past their fast, their fast rate of growth. But the high-tech business services will drive economic development and new technology in both industry and services, but they won't create many jobs. In Europe and the United States, when we have 5 to 6 percent unemployment, we are saying that we've reached full employment and everyone is happy and the government gets re-elected because they've done so well as to bring unemployment down to 5 to 6 percent. Although the rule usually with governments is that they can make the situation worse, but very rarely better. <laughs> when the best they can do is to leave the market uh, alone, in other words. Um, at least with respect to uh, the numbers of unemployed people, not with respect to their standard of living, obviously. And um, the level of unemployment depends on institutional arrangements and the structure of industry, but it's about that in, in sort of post-industrialized service economies. But I do believe that the government has a very big role to play in, um, in supporting unemployment because there is so much uh, chance involved, pure luck, that, uh, that does influence outcomes for a long time to come. You know, you might be a young person, you might, have, you might end up being unemployed six months, nine months, instead of what you would expect normal, which would be two to three months. And that has implications for uh, your future career for over a decade, for example. Well, that's where government has a role to play, to try and avert that. So I do believe that government should take some action to avoid that, but not by restricting what employers are doing. The best way to take the action is by ensuring the incomes of workers and by helping them find a job when they lose the job, because the best kind of insurance for a worker is if a if a labor market generates a lot of jobs, it generates a lot of turnover, so there's rotation of the jobs and durations of unemployment are short. But if by any chance it happens that the duration of unemployment gets long, then government should step in and um, provide the necessary training or necessary investigation as to why the duration of unemployment is, is long and, and try and avert that. And taking that action at about four months of unemployment, even in recession, is a good policy and it's feasible. Although, again, the only countries that, that have really succeeded in doing that are the Scandinavian countries and maybe Netherlands and Germany, actually, recently as well. Definitely not the whole of, uh, of, of the uh, advanced world. The United States is not taking any interest at all in that kind of policy. And uh, Southern Europe 
is paying lip service to it. They say they are interested in it, but they are not doing anything about it. The European Union actually is not doing much about it either. It's not only them. So I, I, I believe that, uh, that that's the key to success in a modern labor market, so in the social welfare system. is one where businesses are, are flexible to take advantage of new opportunities in an economy that changes so rapidly, and government is providing the support for workers who have fall between uh, jobs. And um, it's, they do this through, both through passive income support and through active uh, support uh, after uh, three or four months of unemployment. Now, other social needs that, need, that once the country becomes urbanized arise. Now, you might say, you know, why, why do these needs arise now? You know, it's things like mental health, disability, inequality, poverty. Well, the main reason for that actually is the decline of the family. Because in an agricultural economy, all, all this, what's mentioned up there, support is provided by the family. But in, in an urbanized industrial society, you, you can't expect the family to continue to provide that kind of support. It becomes more dispersed, it's more difficult to communicate within the family. So the state, again, needs to take on that, that function. And what I describe now, nowadays is called the flex security system. It's one that requires the cooperation of uh, unions, employers, governments, of course, adhere to the standards of the International Labor Office at the very minimum. There are negotiations with unions, but the negotiations are always in the spirit of what, what's the best for the company, because that's also the best for the workers and then the government providing the support for those who are unfortunate enough to lose their jobs. So that's the end. The conclusion is that Chinese governments and businesses do need to pay attention to all those factors I mentioned. I spoke in general lines about our experiences in Europe, and I'm happy to take uh, your questions now. Uh, my name's Merlis. I'm an economist. Um, <laughs> I, I think but, you're well-known in this environment. <laughs> And uh, I've got to ask a question that's not exactly economics. If we look at the two extreme cases of industry and services, I think that science-based industry and entertainment and the arts in services, it's a common observation that the fine arts do not progress. This simply is no. Does this give us an indication of where in the long run the, the pattern of growth will go? If it's indeed the, the art side that is going to be increasingly important. Well, you're, you're, you're probably familiar with the Bommel claim in 19, the 1960s that, uh, that eventually we will all be artists and uh, all industrial goods will be produced by <laughs> machines. Which, which, is not, which is not far off the, the truth, in fact, as, a, as something, as T goes to infinity, as you would say. Talking about uh, uh, making the service sector more liberalized, um, nowadays there is this uh, rising sharing economy where, you know, it's internet-based and uh, mobile device-based app that actually um, is rising in a lot of countries how you view uh, the prospect of this uh, sharing economy. Automation and mechanization will go in the, in the service sector, in the, in the office. You know, like, like in the old days, robots replaced the uh, assembly lines in manufacturing. In modern days, uh, you know, using a tablet and, and, and an application on it will replace the uh, telephone call or the actual search in the, in the street. So uh, let's thank the speaker for a very wonderful speech.